Hi, I'm Chris Thompson for Investor Intel. And today I'm with Marty Weems, who's the North American president of American Rare Earths. Ticker symbol on the Australian exchange is ARR, but it also trades on the OTC under the tick ticker ARRNF. How are you today, Marty? Hey, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me today, Chris. Great. So uh, America Rare Earths uh, focuses on uh, rare earths, which has been quite in the news these days, yeah. especially in North America. And, and as governments look to secure domestic supplies, maybe you can just sort of cover off what's going on in the U.S. where your operations are. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Chris. I appreciate that. The um, and Thanks for covering this sector so well. Um, you know, this, this sector remains strong. Your audience knows that. You know that. Uh, significant tailwinds. There's there's continuing pressure to develop supply chains outside of China and rising raw materials prices. So we're seeing consistent accelerating market pull and government push, and that's that's a really fantastic motivator for us to deploy uh, you know capital as a, a really well funded uh, mineral explorer. Yeah, and so for for people who may not know, the rare earths are key these days, and often they're called either critical metal, metals or technical metals, technology metals, because they're used in a lot of the new new electronics as well as the electric vehicles. Maybe you could just briefly yeah. touch on you know sort of the key industries that are are demanding these minerals. Yeah, so the 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 big consumers at the moment, and and uh, you know, in all of uh, predictive models that I've looked at, are certainly uh, electric motors, the electric traction motors in electric vehicles, um, and and also offshore windmills, and in uh, refrigeration, be that uh, air conditioning or you know actual refrigeration units and the and the motors therein. So those are the the big volume and accelerating consumers, but they're used in a, in a wide variety of, of technologies and defense industry end use applications. Yeah. And as I, as I say, it's often called a critical metal because you can't substitute it. So let's talk about a couple of your projects that you have uh, in, in the U.S. Your main project is La Paz in Arizona, and that's at a resource stage. And you've just had some recent news about some, uh, some work you've done there. Maybe you just touch on that news release. Yeah. So uh, it, actually a, a handful of really strong releases uh, over this past uh, probably nine months. It's, uh, you know, had the, seems to have had some substantial impact on our, on our stock price. Um, you know, most notably, uh, you know, less than a year ago uh, at the result of some drilling in 2021, we were able to upgrade our, our maiden resource in La Paz to over 170 million tons, making it uh, one of the largest in the, in North America uh, as an active project. Um, and, uh, while we were doing that drilling in the resource area, we did some exploratory drilling um, about three kilometers, four kilometers to the southwest, and I uh, believe we may have uh, discovered another uh, substantial ore body. Uh, we've now put a uh, exploration on target on that that exceeds 700 million tons up to over 900 million tons in, in grades that are as good or better than, than the maiden resource area. So we may have a, a larger big brother next door, which is quite exciting. Um, and then we're actively working on metallurgy as we speak. Uh, that's being done in, in Perth, Australia by the folks at Nagrom Labs and um, uh, under the direction of Wood PLC. And uh, we have, you know, we're quite aggressive in our field work, uh, mapping, sampling, and, and actively drilling both at La Paz Project in Arizona and at the Hallett Creek Project in Wyoming. And uh, the the met work you're doing uh, for your projects, uh, what's the importance of that for investors of, of getting that from a processing standpoint? You know that's that's really important. You know you you have an engineering background. You know you you know well. Uh, you know what that means. So uh, you know industry watching experts, uh, you know such as yourself and your audience already know that the 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 key to the company's projects is metallurgy. Um, this is a core part of our ongoing activities. Um, you know, as I mentioned, it includes this work by, by NAGROM. We've had some previous work by Saskatchewan Research Council um, with Wood helping us out. And they're guiding that traditional mineral, mineral processing flow sheet, uh, which is all important. But additionally, on that mineral processing and metallurgy front, there's a collaborative work with various U.S. national laboratories and elite research one universities doing cutting edge work 
on potentially disruptive extraction, separation, and purification technologies. We hope to, to weave several of these discoveries into a new tech stack that's more environmentally friendly, water sparing, high efficiency. And, and Chris, you know, uh, thorium is a, is a real thorn inside of, of the industry. <laughs> I was going to ask about the nasties. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, especially in Wyoming, our Wyoming project and our, our Arizona project, our uh, extraordinarily low uranium and thorium content material from Hallett Creek and La Paz have been especially popular with these labs. A uh, few of these labs, very few of these labs can actually handle radioactive content. So, um, you know, we make their job easier in many ways. So we, lo we look forward to sharing the results of these relationships in the future. And right now, the drilling at La Paz, is that uh, you have an existing resource? Are you building upon that? Yeah, so uh, we have a plan uh, and, and uh, permit uh, and applications in process for additional drilling in the resource area. Um, but prior to that, and actively happening right now, is in this new southwest area that's uh, three or four kilometers to the southwest. Uh, we're, we're actively drilling right now uh, at, as we speak. That's been going on for the past month or so. Uh, we expect to, to wrap that up probably later this month, maybe the early days of next month. Um, we've already sent first loads of, of that core off to American Assay Labs in uh, Sparks, Nevada. Um, so, you know, we're, we're drilling both in these in the new area at La Paz, as well as we'll, uh, we have permits in process to do a pretty robust additional drilling program in the resource area. And how close is the resource to surface? It, it's exposed at surface. So it is consistently exposed at surface. There's some areas that have some alluvial cover, but, but by and large, this is uh, consistently exposed at surface. So this could potentially be an open pit uh, mine then? I, I, I would be surprised if it's not. Uh, yeah. I, we're, we're operating on the current assumption that it is almost certainly to be. And your Hallett Creek uh, project, it's exciting times there. You just started your initial drill program and had a news release on that. Maybe just touch on a few of the key points. Yeah, we're really excited about that. You know, Wyoming is a great mining jurisdiction. We have a really exciting collaboration with the uh, University of Wyoming School of Energy Resources as they work on the, the Department of Energy's core CM or critical minerals projects. Uh, so they've been incredibly supportive and, and uh, encouraging, been on the property, and, and we, we collaborate with them and are sharing data with them, and they're, they're helping us. Um, you know, so our, when we first uh, acquired this, it was you know, less than 75 acres uh, from uh, Zenith Minerals in Australia. Um, you know, they had a nice little discovery, had done a little bit of initial metallurgy work, but uh, I don't think had a, you know, a complete awareness of just how big it was. Uh, our geologists got in there, uh, really aggressive work. We've been able to uh, negotiate um, uh, additional exploration leases with the state of Wyoming on state land, uh, which is extraordinarily mining friendly. And then um, we've also expanded uh, another uh, several thousand acres of, of uh, Bureau of Land Management mineral uh, areas. So uh, that that property is well over 2,000 acres now from the 75 acres it was when we acquired it. Uh, surface sampling just continues to exceed expectations, and that has gotten us motivated to uh, accelerate uh, on our previously planned drilling program. We're, we're actually doing it a little bit earlier than we originally planned because um, we're excited by what we see there. And this, this plan is, uh, I think I, I read somewhere about nine holes and uh, almost a thousand meters. Is, uh, and yeah. when do you think you'll get the results back on that? Yeah, so it, uh, you know, that drilling's just started in the last couple of weeks. Um, you know, we've, we're, we're actively still drilling, log and core, got two drill rigs on those holes. So they're moving quite quickly. Uh, we think we might finish a little bit ahead of schedule there. Um, but, the, you know, labs all over the world are, are stacked pretty deep in core yeah. these days. So it's a little bit of a slower process than we would like. Um, but, you know, the lab has told us they'll, they'll get to it as quick as they can. We, we don't expect any extraordinary delays. Um, so, you know, given, you know, current timing, you know, here we are uh, towards the end of March, you know, I would think, uh, by the end of May, we'd have data and be looking to make some reports to the market relative to what we're finding in that core.
Well, that sounds great. Well, I, I look forward to uh, watching your progress uh, for this year. The rare earths is definitely a, a space that, you know, I am interested yeah. in. And, and so other investors should be looking at as well uh, as uh, we, we try to secure that North American supply of these uh, critical minerals. I uh, just wanted to thank you for your time today. I was speaking with Marty Weems, who is a North American president of American Rare Earths, uh, traded in the Australia exchange under the ticker symbol ARR, and in the US on the OTC market under ARRNF. Thanks, Marty. Yep. Thank you, Chris. Bye-bye.